Okay guys, uh, I've got another teardown for you. This is a Tridonic PCA2-58 Eco um, fluorescent lamp ballast. And this is a dimmable fluorescent ballast. It's a slightly older model. It takes two 58 watt tubes, and those are the five foot ones. Um, and it's dimmable between apparently between about one and 100%. Now, this was originally gonna be a retrofit for um, a light fitting I had, but uh, I couldn't get uh, the wires chased through the walls in the time I had to finish the project, so uh, uh, I had to abandon it. And I've now got this ballast which I got off eBay, um, which I've got no use for, so uh, we're going to tear it down and see what's inside it. Now, this is what's called a switch dimming ballast, uh, if you can see that there. Um, let's just see if we can get a bit closer to that. This, rather than taking an analog input, um, just simply takes a, a momentary push switch input. You simply short two terminals together and uh, the ballast responds by switching on or off in the event of a press or dimming up or down in the event of a long hold. And it's also got some sort of smart port there. That's for some sort of digital controller. I think it's called DALI, D-A-L-I. Um, but I don't have one of those, so I can't test it. Um, made in the EU, so... Uh, probably explains why these things normally sell for about £120 each. Okay, so let's begin the teardown. Okay, so just looking at the ends before we start stripping, you can see it's got these fairly standard push fit connectors. You insert a solid core piece of wire and it's got a spring grip in there which locks onto it. And you can see the uh, diagram there, it's two tubes. Um, they're almost certainly connected in series. Um, and this apparently has preheating on it as well. And on the other side, again, we've got standard push fit uh, type connectors. And you can see the pin out there, earth, line, and switches. Fairly straightforward. Okay, so this is what the PCB looks like. Um, interestingly enough, it's a single layer PCB, which considering the complexity of the circuit and the size and space constraints is pretty impressive, really. So. Um, Let's start with the beginning, fairly standard uh, AC front end, a couple of X-class capacitors, metal oxide varista, um, presume either an inductor or possibly a fuse there, common mode uh, inductor there, um, another some sort of filter capacitor here. Where are the bridge rectifiers? Well, it's on the back, all the semiconductors are here. So uh, here's our bridge rectifier, standard 4-pin SMD device. And uh, now this is where it gets interesting. There's another bridge rectifier here. This one's a lot smaller. Um, and actually this one here connects to the switch input. So uh, you connect the switch to live to initiate a switching operation or dimming operation. So it has a little bridge rectifier to convert it down to a logic DC level. Pretty clever, really. So the next step here is this circuit here. So we've got capacitor here, we've got a uh, MOSFET here, this is an IRF830, which is a uh, 500 volt, 4.5 amp MOSFET, and there's a nice big inductor here with a few other bits and bobs, and then there's our reservoir capacitor. This is a very typical layout for an active power factor correction circuit, and if we look on the back, here we go, there it is, there's the FAN7525, uh, uh, sorry, 7527 IC, which is an active power factor correction system. So there we go, pretty straightforward. Reservoir capacity is a, is a Sikorel 125, 22 microfarad, 450 volt. I think this is made by EPCOS, who are a manufacturer of high-end capacitors. So it's likely to be pretty good. I don't know what the 125 means. I suspect that's a temperature marking, but I can't see any other temperature markings on this. So it certainly sounds like this is a high-end capacitor as would be expected. Okay, next step is the output stage. So we've got a couple of, uh, of MOSFETs here with little integrated heat sinks and these are also IRF 830s, so uh, 500 volt 4.5 amp MOSFETs. And uh, we've got two of them and some capacitors and a big inductor here. Well, I mean, this looks to me like a very standard uh, half-bridge output driver, which is really what you'd expect for this type of device. So where's all this control coming from? So it's all on the back. And uh, we've got two uh, ICs here. One here is labelled Tridonic uh, 
D0810BB. So it's obviously a uh, custom ASIC, um, presumably that which drives the output stage. But there is um, a off-the-shelf chip here, and this actually is a microchip PIC16C621, C621, which is a pretty common off-the-shelf 8-bit microcontroller. Um, in fact, this PIC series, the PIC16 series, is a great uh, one that's used among hobbyists, so it's a, a chip that I'm quite familiar with. And then a few other bits and bobs here. I think these are just uh, MOSFET drivers. Um, being a half-bridge circuit, you need some kind of driver for the high side. And then the rest is just uh, a few inductors. So these look like uh, EMI suppression inductors. Um, this looks like it's probably some sort of filter. And this is probably the main transformer, I reckon, with a feedback winding there. I'm not going to strip it down entirely. It's just doing my head in, just looking at those uh, traces on the back of the PCB. But there we go. Quite interesting to see how these are made, custom ASICs and microprocessors. Well, I hope you found that interesting.